And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. What a joy it is having you come into our space here where we can minister the Word of God to you. And we're coming to you today with a message that has been preached somewhere around the world. Something like Santiago. I don't know where he is. I just pray that you'll be blessed, inspired, healed, delivered, set free, fear gone, faith arise, and that you will receive today from this preached word just what you need. Thank you so much for being here. Would you ask yourselves that right now? Why am I following? Why am I following? This is a very interesting passage to me uh, because when it was day, Jesus called his disciples and he, he chose 12. First one that he names here is Simon and then Andrew. That's, that's very interesting to me because in John's Gospel, the first chapter, the 40, 40 and verse 40 to 42, it says, One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And Andrew first slighted his own brother Simon and said unto him, Peter, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And Andrew, Andrew brought Peter to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, Peter, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah, you shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation the stone. Now, why, why do I follow, find this interesting, and I want you to follow me, is because the first person in this list of names that Jesus calls into discipleship is Andrew. And then Andrew in turn finds his brother Peter and brings him to Jesus. And so in fact Andrew has seniority over Peter. But when the list of names is given in all four Gospels, Peter is at the head of the list. What do you do when you are instrumental in bringing someone who goes ahead of you? How do you feel? What attitude do you have? <laughs> what do you think about that? And then, not only that, but then Jesus, out of these 12 men, three emerge, of course, as his inner circle. And they are Peter, James, and John. Andrew, who is the senior, is not even on the list. His brother Simon not only makes the inner circle, but will later become the chief apostle. And the one who brings him to Jesus now has to become subservient to him. Andrew now has to back down and back away and allow Peter to come forth. And Andrew, the first apostle who comes to Jesus, Jesus doesn't even honor him with being a part of the inner circle. His brother, who wouldn't have gotten saved had he not brought him, now becomes the first among equals. Seniority and longevity seems to be thrown <laughs> to the wind. When you look at scripture, Peter and James, Peter, James, and John, these three boys, homeboys, homies, these, these three, these three dudes, they are mentioned in the Gospels about 30 times. And, and, and Luke records Peter's movements. And, and the thoughts of Peter are pinned in in his own epistle. And, and John writes his own gospel along with three other epistles. 
And John is privileged to uh, lean upon the breast of Jesus and feel and sense the heartbeat of Jesus out of all the twelve. But Andrew, Andrew, he seems to be dissipating and fading, losing his seniority and losing his influence and lo losing his authority and losing his voice and losing everything. I think you've got nine other guys. <laughs> you've got Fabius, who's only mentioned one time in Scripture. You've got Simon the Canaanite, who is <laughs> one mentionable. And the rest of them, you hear nothing of them. How discouraging this can be. That you are chosen to be a disciple, but you don't get any airtime. <laughs> You're chosen to be one of, one of the twelve, but all the attention and all the focus and the camera is always on Peter, chief apostle, and Andrew, who brought it there, has to always stay back and look at his brother with the keys to the kingdom to unlock and open the door. Peter, James, and John. But to God always keep in mind, why am I following? Come on, say with me. Why am I following? <laughs> when we find these boys, they're all up in the upper room. Why are they in the upper room? Because they're there because a decision must be made. Another has to take part in the ministry that, that Judas had obtained. And although Judas fell, another must take his ministry assignment. Why? Because the church must go on. The church is bigger than your selfish decisions. You can be replaced. Would you bless somebody today and tell them you can be replaced? I know you think you're all that. I know you think that the church revolves around you. But you just get it yourself and make some decisions about you and put Jesus out and, and you will find that the church will go on. You will find that the church is slightly bigger than you. And you will find that there is somebody out there that will take your place. And you will find that when God replaces Saul, he will always find a David who is better than Saul. Come on, tell somebody you can't be replaced. Acts 
121. Judas must now be replaced. The replacement must come from the company of men who stayed together with us from the time Jesus was baptized by John up to the day of the ascension, designated along with us as a witness to his resurrection. Verse 23, Acts 123 says, They nominated two. Joseph or Shabbos, named, nicknamed Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, O oh God, know every one of us inside out. Make plain which. Thank you so much for tuning in to us. And I pray that you have been blessed and inspired, delivered, set free, and healed. If you have been, why don't you sit down and send your gift to us, $22. That's what I'm asking you to give. That will denote what God is going to do in your life for the rest of this year. Be blessed. Hopefully we'll see you on tomorrow.